Hey everybody, so I'm taking a mycology class, so today I thought I'd tell you guys uh, how, to, how to effectively sample a mushroom specimen for identification purposes. Um, and we're going to be demonstrating that with a, uh, a mushroom that's grown on a, uh, a box elder tree, an Acer Nagundo. And uh, we'll talk more about the significance of this bag here in a second. But um, for now, let's just get into business and cut this mushroom off the tree and get into the brass tack, shall we? So when you're mushroom foraging, it always pays to uh, pay attention for poison ivy. There's a lot of that growing back here, but um, I've decided to mostly just ignore that fact for the moment and uh, get this mushroom because I need it for a project in my mycology course. But there it is, the mushroom that we're going to be sampling today. I've got my handy dandy sampling knife and I'm just going to cut it off the tree and then we'll get a nice look at it and I'll tell you guys what the species is. So just as I suspected, this is a Cereoporus squamosus, uh, also known as the, uh, they call this, I think, the, uh, the Dryad Saddle or the uh, Pheasant Back. It gets the name Dryad Saddle from the fact that, you know, these mushrooms will actually get so sizable that a Dryad might be able to sit upon them, uh, if you believe in Dryads and whatnot. It gets the name Pheasant Back because it gets these kind of, these kind of scaly ruffles about the cap surface which uh, are similar to the patterns, I guess, that you get on the, uh, like the ruffles of feathers on the back of a pheasant, perhaps? Which is where it gets com that common name. This is a, uh, a polypore mushroom. So as you can see under here, it doesn't have any gills. It's actually got a porous surface, which if I had to guess is the reason that this mushroom was formerly placed in a it's been formerly placed in the genus Boletus, which has some, some quite choice edibles. I believe this mushroom is actually edible in its younger stages, but it's supposed to um, toughen up with maturity. But what I'm going to do right now is, if it's big enough, and I think it is, I'm going to put it in my sampling bag, my trusty, trusty sampling bag. And the information on the sampling bag, you're going to want to put like a species ID, you're going to want to put the substrate. I found this one growing on Acer Nagundo, a box elder maple that was alive. And that tracks with this species' ecology because it can be parasitic on trees. It's typically, it's typically saprotrophic, which means you're going to find it on dead material, but it can be found being a parasite on living trees. So I've got the date of collection and the locality of collection. Like other incidental, or not incidental, but other data you can put on here would include like if this was growing solitarily or gregariously, which means singular in a crowd. But this one was just growing by itself, so I've just decided to, um, I've decided that that information isn't pertinent at this time, and I'm going to jam it in the sampling bag, and then I'm going to throw it on the drying rack, which I'll show you guys in a minute. So here's the drying rack. I've got it going down in the uh, in the basement. We got the dehumidifier running to uh, keep the moisture in the air down and hopefully prevent any mold growth. But I've got a couple different fungi here, including that Cereal porous that we just talked about. And I think we'll just just run down, you know, some uh, some quick little fungus identification of some of the more like like Cereal porous squamosis is super easy to identify. It's a very I guess you could call it a very charismatic fungus, but I've got two other charismatic fungi species going on right here, and we'll just chat about them real quick. This first one, hang on, let me move it out of the grow lights. This is a really, this is really quite a cool mushroom. You see those, those alternating ridges of dark and light tissue? That's because this mushroom actually grows. Um, it'll put out more and more growth every single year, so those are almost like if my understanding of this fungus is correct, those are almost like the growth rings of a tree. But this right here, this is the lovely uh, Ganoderma aplanatum, uh, also known as the artist conch. They call it the artist conch because this pore surface, when the tissue gets damaged here, oh, by the way, all these mushrooms that we're working with here at the moment are polypores. So if you're looking for some information on gilled mushrooms, I'm afraid that might just have to come in a later video if you want it, or from another source, which is totally cool. But we're just talking polypores today. But so the pore surface, and you can kind of see that a little bit, it actually bruises brown when damaged. So you can like, you can like make drawings across the surface of these pores, which is really quite neat. 
you know. So that's Ganoderma aplanatum. Um, I'm pretty sure the ecology on that one is saprotrophic. I found this one, as you can see from the tag, growing on dead wood uh, on the 30th of, 30th, 30th, my God, 30th of August. Um, there you go. And then this one right here, this is, this is a mushroom that you've simply got to get familiar with. You know, it's got this wonderful, this wonderful orange, kind of hard to see that because it's been drying for a couple days and it's lost a little bit of the coloration. Got that beautiful orange on top and then a wonderful yellow on the bottom on the pore surface. This is, uh, this is Latoporus sulfurius, the chicken of the woods. I actually, I actually, oh wow, it's sticking a little bit. Look at that. I actually fried up a bit of this last night with the, uh, with my partners helping me out with some very valuable instruction because I can't cook worth shit. Shit. Um, which was very, very kind and lovely of them. But this is a very cool mushroom. It tastes absolutely fucking phenomenal, just like chicken. Better than chicken in my my opinion because I kind of hold that chicken is a bit of a bland meat. But that's a hot take for another day. So Latoporus sulfurious, um, you might want to, you know, it might help because there is another genus or species of Latoporus that we get in North America, Latoporus cincinnatus. The way you distinguish between sulfurious and cincinnatus is by the, um, the color of the pore surface. Cincinnatus will have a white pore surface and you can, you can see it on the reflection from the tin foil. This is obviously yellow. And then of course, we'll touch back in with the old, the old Cereoporus squamosus. Isn't that a beauty? But so what I've got going on here is just a, and this is probably a very rudimentary setup that isn't the best, but I've got them on tin foil so that, you know, usually, normally, like first night, I'll lay them down, lay them down with the pore surface or gill surface facing the tin foil so that they, if they do drop any spores, I'll be able to get a spore print off of them like that, which is another tool that you can use to identify fungi along with like macroscopic features, microscopic features, their general ecology, the spore print, all that stuff, all those things cut together will give you a good strong fungal identification, you know, but I didn't really have to do much of that work because again, Cereoporus squamosus and all these fungi are pretty charismatic. But there you go, that's just a, uh, a brief insight into the fungal lab and a conversation about some, uh, some nice polypore mushrooms. Uh, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about, you know. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments or whatnot. Have a good one, folks.